We'd like to sincerely thank our Patreon supporters. All right, guys, it's finally time. I know we've been talking about this water in this hallway. It's because I dug it down six inches to the bottom of my wall pour. So now I am ready to form out and pour my door threshold. Then I can hang our front entry door for the hallway. I just removed for winter that uh, shade cloth on the roof. We need more sunlight and uh, very interesting enough. Um, I had forest and Ivy together for about a week and he was trying to mate with her and she wasn't running away, but she wasn't receptive. She wasn't ready. Um, but now she is laying as close as possible to him, which is to me a sign that the female is choosing the male. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and open the door without startling her. The door was just really, ugh. I think I gotta tap it with my shoe from the other side. This door was a little tight, um, but she's definitely choosing him. So we'll, we'll get that door open for the two of them right now. Um, I'm going to show you the first step for the plumbing in the hallway in just one second. Let's just, let's just get this door open real quick. Just, uh, there you go. Door is open. And I think they both know what it means because it's been opened and closed. Oh, we were just looking in that enclosure. That water's clean. I'm working my way down the hallway so you saw her water looked disgusting and I'll show you why. The first step to doing the plumbing is to drilling the hole middle of where their water thing is going to be. And we need to make a decision relatively quick in this video on what type of plumbing we're going to use. If we're going to use a low pressure irrigation pipe. Um, yeah, that's what I was going to show you. Her, her water is filthy. It's due to be cleaned. There's no hole drilled there yet. And I was going to drill the hole, which is going to throw a bunch of cement dust and everything in there. And uh, I even have the extension cord already pulled over here. We're going to drill all the holes in this hallway. And then we can do white PVC pipe with uh, quarter turn shutoffs and then an extension of hose sticking into their enclosure and this is the guru females i just dug up eggs from her enclosure just this morning um unfertilized but i got five five eggs um that looked good uh, 11 total um so yeah we've already done her water so if we do the low pressure pipe this is what sticks out into the cage a very rigid pipe um, the lizards really can't mess it up or anything like that. It'll always um, be aimed at their water tub. The only problem is, is when I dump the tub to clean it, I have to move the tub around the stream of water to get it rinsed out to be able to get it nice and clean. Um, the PVC pipe will allow me to put a piece of flexible hose through the wall. Um, I'll probably have to be a 90 with a fitting real close here. And then I would be able to have like two foot of hose. So then with that two foot of hose, I can hose off the tub and then just lay that hose. The hose will probably like just curl up in there. And, and then it'll also fill up faster because it has a higher pressure. The other stuff I think is, don't quote me. I think the PVC pipe is about 60 PSI. And I think the other stuff drops down to like 15. So if I'm going down the hallway and I'm doing a couple, maybe it's 30, a couple, first one fine, it'll fill up decently. And then you, you do another one and then another one, it, it, it's controlling the pressure by reducing the amount of water flow. Whereas if you do the PVC pipe, the irrigation pump will just keep kicking on more to try and maintain that pressure where I could fill up more waters. I'm sure there's a limit, but 
I can fill up more waters at the same time and get through this chore quicker. So I'm gonna drill the holes and then I'm gonna show you guys kind of what the black irrigation pipe looked like because that's what we had set up at the other house. All right, so I have my, my hammer drill. The extension cord is not plugged in. Nothing's gonna happen if it's not plugged in. I did just pull that cord around and of course I grabbed the camera to start filming. Uh, yeah, the filming is a big distraction for getting work done. Sometimes I just wanna put the camera down. I know you guys complain that I don't show the work, but if I show the work, the work happens a lot slower. Ugh. Until I get to the point where I have a camera guy and then all that will be solved. Tom has a full-time job, so. All right, we're plugged in. Now, I don't really care exactly where the hole is. Roughly middle and just below that two by four is all that matters to me. quite easy with the right tool. All right, I'm gonna knock out all the rest. All right, guys, it's uh, the next day, and uh, I don't know if I mentioned that in the last video, or, but it, it was the first cold night of the year. A uh, second cold night, first significantly cold night. It was 50 degrees last night, um, but it's uh, early the next morning, and uh, you can see, look, she's already eyeballing if I have food. Pinky's already out sunning herself on her box, um, alert as can be. And again, it's it's probably not 60 degrees out yet. She's sunning herself. Like, it's cold in the shade, but as soon as you get in the sun, that Florida sun really does a great job of warming you up. All right, so I did some other work and stuff after I started filming yesterday, and I found the old water lines from the other house. And this kind of shows, you know, this is the wrong height. This should drop all the way to the floor and be resting in the mud. Um, and then this would get installed with a strap here and then a strap like mid wall or something like that. Um, so it stays straight and true. But this is the quarter turn valve for the low pressure line. Um, I'm gonna go look and see if this can be used for higher pressure. I'm not sure. I know that the tree farm that was on this property before was using a, uh, a larger diameter, like a three quarter line, thinner walled than, I'm trying to find, yeah, what I'm using is a thick wall but smaller diameter um, line. Mine doesn't have crimps. Theirs does have crimps on it. Maybe that allows it to do the higher pressure, but they have this buried all around the property for irrigation and was suiting their purposes and was, they were running at high pressure. But I'm gonna go to Home Depot and look at the cost of, I really only have enough of these valves and elbows and everything to do one line. And I already tried to pull one apart. Now it's cold, it's the wrong temperature to pull it apart and broke one. So just because I have all these fittings doesn't mean that I won't break them trying to get them to the right length and everything because uh, the distances between cages are different. Like it's all different. Like if you put that against the wall, this one's at a wacky angle. Um, Everything has to be cut and adjusted and everything to fit the cages that we have here. Um, so I'm sure some of that material is salvageable and then some isn't. Um, so I need to look at the cost of the PVC to the soft line. Soft line, you would think should be cheaper. And if it's not cheaper, maybe it's faster because you're not gluing everything. Um, and as far as the, the line itself, I would have to buy whatever PVC pipe that I'm using 
be nicer if this was already weed whacked but all the line that was pulled off this property all their irrigation line behind these weeds is a massive pile of lines now they have sharp bends i already cut a sharp bend out of one and straightened it out and it seems like it straightens out and the kink disappears um and i even have a pile of the smaller diameter stuff oh you know what i'm looking at this brown stuff has perforated holes so that's no good um and there's just a little bit well i actually i don't know how much of this black line is in this pile again i need to get in here and weed whack all this i was i was running the weed eater yesterday but i didn't finish a section yet um so i'm gonna go to home depot look at the cost and uh if i did the low pressure lines i'm okay with that for filling the tubs i think i'll do a hose bib at the end of the hallway we do have the hallway width so i could put a hose bib at the end of this hallway with one of those flex hoses they break but they also shrink into nothing and i could put a hose bib here at the end of the hallway where it's not in the way and i could pull it down the hallway and use it to rinse off the tubs um before i fill them and i think that'll work out great so i'll let you know what i decide all right guys i uh I measured our existing doors, and I know this is a plumbing video, but it's it's really about getting the hallways done so we can get past the water in the hallway and uh, in the mud. Like I'm tired of having this this wet mud on my shoes. But the existing door is 89 and three quarters, which brings us with our spacing down here. We really want our threshold to be even with this line. We want we want to have five and a half, six inches of rock in this hallway. The rock will hide whatever water finds its way into the hallway. It stops the weeds from growing. Um, and it's a lot more forgiving when dirt finds its way out of the enclosures that the dirt can settle in before we start having a weed problem again. Um, I have the, so I think the solution is, is to cut the doors down just slightly and make them work with the space. I checked the other hallway. We can't use the doors in the other hallway either. Um, it's, it's basically the same elevation. So what we're gonna do here, oh, and the last little segment, I, I said that I was gonna price out between the soft lines and the PVC pipe. And even though I owned all the soft line to do pretty much both hallways, with the free soft line, and it seemed like the components were cheaper, but when I priced it out, it was like within $4 of doing the PVC pipe. And the PVC pipe will allow me to work with a higher pressure and fill the waters faster. Um, and both of them I priced using a cheaper shutoff. The soft line only has the one cheap shutoff. It doesn't need to be any nicer than cheap because it's made to work with, um, now, what did I say? I said something up to like 15 PSI. It's actually 25 PSI. It's basically half or a little less than half of what the PVC is going to run at. I think the system here is it's around 60 PSI. Um, not that you'll be able to open the valve all the way because it'll shoot halfway across the cage. But I can open that valve and get the maximum flow of water that that tub is going to allow. Um, so we're gonna go with half inch PVC pipe in the hallways and all the rest of them will have a T, but this one will just have a 90 there and we'll have a little strap. Uh, they're in the other bucket. There'll be a strap to hold it against the wall. There'll be a strap to hold it against the wall. The shut off at a certain height, a 90 shooting the pipe into the enclosure and then the pipe sticking out maybe four inches into the enclosure. And I know that I said I wanted the soft line in the enclosure. And, and instead of spending the money uh, using an adapter that will adapt it to hose material, in the marine di industry, there's tons of different types of soft hose that I can probably slide over that PVC pipe 
zip tie or clamp with something that's not going to be uh, uh, an issue with the monitors cutting themselves on it and and still have a flexible line in there to rinse off but I already did make the decision if I went with the PVC pipe I will have a hose at the end of this hallway that I could run down this hallway and hose out the bins with higher pressure and then just keep rinsing and filling and work my way down the hallway um, so the only difference between the first one or the end one which just has a 90 and the other ones is where this one goes up instead of using a 90 it has a T and it will come up you know with the shut off valve and then a 90 sticking through the wall um, I did like the soft pipe being that it was uh, black and it wouldn't draw your eye to it this PVC pipe's gonna draw your eye but I'm gonna fill the hallway with white rock anyway so I think you're earlier gonna see a bunch of white along the ground um, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and fit this one side of the hallway myself and then we'll probably do a time-lapse putting together this half of the hallway now these enclosures, these last three are not done. This morning I just got dirt in this last one. Um, and I need to do demo work at Jupiter with those last couple cages to get the materials to have that wall with the door already made. I already have that already made. Why not use what's already made? Then I can finish these enclosures. And then I got a couple in the black throat or the rock monitor row that needs to get done. And so we'll, we can already form the front threshold to the elevation we want while we're doing this. And not until the PVC pipe exits, then we can form for our threshold, which will go over those PVC pipes. So as we get towards this end of the hallway, we're gonna sink the pipe down a little bit more. They'll come together with another T fitting and then pop up over here I think I want this area to be where our, I wanna have a big uh, tub where we can soak our, um, all the food trays in like a very, very light bleach solution. We can soak them all. That way we're not transferring anything from animal to animal. Like, I mean, I just rinse off my trays right now and I'm not obsessive about bacteria, but why not when i have so many different species some that are coming in new like people's other people's animals that are on like breeder loans like i need to be more careful about that so we'll do a tub to soak the trays my processing or cleaning table will be here so once we get to the end of the hallway we are going to have to start digging up this line we're gonna have to find out where it goes, where we can tie into it. I'm sure it's three quarter inch under the ground and we can get rid of this in the middle of the yard. It'll pop up over here. And I think once we get outside the hallway, we'll go back into three quarter line and we'll run eight inches up the wall with our line. That way we can tap into it. I know that we want to, well, you know what? we're going to have to put another T with a hose bib on whichever side of this hallway we want to. Hmm. Another thing to decide, do we want that hose hanging off the wall inside the hallway, like always being there? I suppose it's not in the way of those doors because those doors open towards it. I think we can get away with that. So we'll do a hose bib on the wall on one of those last two sections but i know that i want the water up because we're going to pull water for our cleaning station for our sink off of that pipe and we can cap it right here on this wall to use to pull water to the other hallway and then eventually once we get these rows done we're going to continue that water on so we can have a hose for the chickens, turkeys, pigs, all that stuff. Now, that is only gonna be for cleaning. Remember, we're gonna pull these low pressure zones, which I would love to find the help of a plumber that has a trencher or something like that too. I think this stuff's deep. I would love to get these zones consolidated and get these pipes out of the ground. 
Uh, I know people offer to volunteer. I would love help with that. I am so sick and tired of cutting around and weed whacking around those posts, but I just haven't had time to touch that yet. Um, so if anyone wants to help with that, I would love some help with that. Um, I'm gonna start working on this hallway and then we'll do a time lapse on the other side. All right, I mentioned this before guys, as one of the steps to finishing up the hallway, I need to get the water to the back of the hallway because once I do it, the plumbing has to be connected because there's, I mean, I guess there's a temporary way, but then it requires more steps. So why not do it the right way? Um, I think when they dug this irrigation down, um, they probably had a backhoe here because I hand dug a couple of them and they seem like they're they're at least two and a half feet down, if not three feet down. I don't think that they wanted the, uh, the heavy equipment that would roll over it to break the lines. Although I think everything down there was soft lines. Um, but I had to start at the first connection. That connection should handle three of those zones, but that means two or three of them just get eliminated. I have to dig up this entire trough. Um, I'm not gonna hand dig it all in one day. It's not to say I couldn't, but there are so many other projects that need attention. I can go ahead and without killing myself, dig maybe two sections today, two sections tomorrow, and just spread it out over a couple days. Um, I would time lapse it, but it's drizzling. I think there's like a winter cold front coming through. So, which means it's a nice cloudy day, perfect day for doing this. So. After I get to the bottom of the first hole, I'll show you how deep I have to go. Okay, so what I'm looking at, I've got this hole and like I said, it's it's every bit of three foot deep where the plumbing is. They've got it running back in one inch PVC pipe. They've got a T where it comes into the soft line and this would have fed this row of where they had the, uh, the giant dock pilings or telephone pole posts. Um, and then they had, I think like two by eights on top of them running lengthwise to support the trees. And then they had watering systems off of that. And this one fed into an additional row that they had up here. That was actually, I think they maybe was an afterthought for them and they added it on. And that's, that's why it looks like it was added on. So you could see this zone continues going. I should excavate that a little bit more because off the head at the irrigation, I see six zones leaving it. I should actually verify how many zones are coming back here because I think it's just four back here. So I have two zones going somewhere else. Um, and so off of that one zone, that's where the PVC pipe continued, has an elbow, and then would have fed this row of plants. So this so what i'm thinking is because i started digging the trough thinking that i was going to dig a three foot deep trough between the two but where they popped out of the ground is not where they ended up so a lot of all that digging is for nothing um what i think i might do is cut that pvc pipe for that zone right there and turn it into a soft line and then bring that soft line up to 18 inches down and start running a soft line for that zone and keep it numbered one and then maybe stop it right here and then get what would be the beginning of the next zone dig that one up do the same and then i would have two that are numbered um i will have to turn the zones on because i know in the beginning it does those two rows plus that additional one that we just found um, but I think they start doing more rows as the rows remember the back of this yard is a triangle and it gets skinnier so They were able to do more rows because technically the rows weren't as long So I think the next one does three so I should only have to dig up the first one and Then just 18 inches down which will save a lot of digging um, But we need to confirm that I'll put flags on the ones that I want to dig up um, I think by the end I think the last two do four rows. So figure that out. And no matter what, we need to dig down on this one to get to what is not on a zone. What is 
um, just a water line. So one of those lines is just a water line and we need to grab it right here. Probably, I don't think it quite needs a 90 or maybe it, maybe it is running there and I could do a soft 90 and kind of work the PVC pipe. Because remember, we want it to pop up. Ideally, I want it to pop up over here. And, or maybe like over here or something like that. And uh, I was thinking about doing a slab back here for where I process any meat and stuff like that. And I'll have a rinse sink. But I think I might just do white rock. Why not just do white rock just like I'm going to have in the hallway. I'll keep the ants off my feet. It'll keep anything that I rinse off going down into the soil. I can elevate it higher than the surrounding grounds. It'll never be wet. Um, and there's still plenty of room because on the back side of these cages, there's cages that are on the driveway for not the, the baby holdbacks, but the other maybe medium-ish size lizards. If I have cages like that, I would rather them on the back side of these cages um, in, instead of on my driveway. I do want to separate myself from... I don't want my entire life to be immersed in this. So um, even though no matter what, it is immersed in it, everyday care and whatnot, but I still would like to um, be able to shut down at the end of the day and actually have a reptile free evening if I if I so choose. <laughs> um, so I think uh, more digging. <laughs> um, I do need to go to this pile where they pulled back all the irrigation. Yes, just like Kenan, I think I'm going to have uh, my pile of scraps. Oh, I wish you could see this bird. It had a bright green chest. So those are the, all the telephone poles that were for their irrigation. Um, and these are all the irrigation lines. Now, they may have ruined them by pinching them like this, but I can get the line, straighten them out, and see. Um, yeah, we have all this wire that we could use for future projects. I mean, this is what they, they tied the trees onto. And then they had the little irrigation lines popping off these rigid lines. Like, they had it set up really nice. They spent a lot of money setting it up. And I've got water tubs, tires, planning stuff, some lumber, some uh, garden borders, a whole bunch of uh, pots for different size potted plants and whatnot. A whole bunch here. Um, we'll eventually get through all this and get rid of all the garbage back here. As well as, uh, remember I talked about on the, the airboat video, the Brazilian pepper. Uh, I'm highly allergic to these plants. I mean, it's not going to get me by me touching it with the palm of my hand. But if it touches the soft of my arm, it will get me. So, like, uh, I don't want any of those on my property. And that plant, when it starts putting off those pepper berries, it, then it just spreads and spreads and spreads and spreads. Um, I think there's another one growing up inside there. So, I do. Actually, there's quite a few of them growing up in there. So, that's how they'll spread. Um... So maybe when Jude gets here, I will get him in there and get him to attack those because we don't want them in there. I don't want them on my property at all. But uh, I'm going to get back to digging. Um, I think I'm going to mess with that today. The next day I work, um, I know I need to do the PVC pipe and uh, I want to form the front side of the hallway. Uh, because as I work the PVC pipes back, um, I could hang that door and at least only have one entrance. And then after I get the PVC pipe out the back, then I can pour this threshold. Because at the bottom of this threshold, since it's such an everyday walkway and carts will go over it and everything, I kind of do a larger mushroom footer at the base of that form and it wouldn't be easy to get the plumbing underneath it. So it'd be better to get the, um, the plumbing done first. And then, uh, then that form can be kind of poured around it and it'd only make it sturdier. All right, back to digging, but what a perfect day for it. I don't know if you guys can see on the video. I mean, it's, it's overcast and it's the lightest of drizzle. It's uh, not enough to get you wet, but it's enough to cool you off. 
So I'm gonna go dig some holes. All right, it's uh, I think it's about lunchtime. I'm gonna grill up some chicken. But uh, first hole where I'm going to attach uh, a soft line and I think I'm just gonna trench it at 18 inches deep. Um, this one will just get discarded, cut off. The trench will go right past that. That'll get buried. Um, this one, yeah, this one will start another line, the second zone. And then we'll start the third zone here. And then once we get to this corner, there's only two pipes that go after this. Or I'm sorry, three pipes. I don't know what the third does. I know one goes to the water. That's a, a high pressure line, which will feed our hallway. And one should do the fourth zone. Um, I'm assuming that there's some zones because there's six zones that are maybe discarded or capped or maybe they remove the contact so that it doesn't engage that zone. So maybe they have some zones that are discarded. I have seen some soft lines that are sticking up near some of the oak trees and stuff that were planted along the fence line. They probably, when they planted all those trees, probably put irrigation on everything to start it off and then maybe capped off some of that stuff. Um, so I'm just not gonna worry about it. It doesn't engage from the main head, so it's not gonna be a problem. So I'll cap it. I won't just cut it and leave it. I will cap it just in case someone ever comes out here and repairs something and then engages that zone again so I don't have water pressurized underground causing a sinkhole back here. But uh, instead of digging a hole to get to that, I'm just gonna intercept it right here. And, and I think that makes a lot more sense. And uh, I don't know, I might be able to get it going straight enough with just a soft 45 and, and go in there. Um, and so I think all the irrigation zones, if I have them coming up with soft lines right here, and then I can attack them later, I think that's a good safe spot to leave them until we're ready for them. Again, we're gonna use zones one and two. Zone one will do a, like a shower system over their water every day for 30 minutes or something like that. So they have some water movement, it'll excite them, it makes them feed. I mean, the, the monitors love the moving water, especially when we get into some different species on the other side. Um, they'll like that. But uh, I'm gonna go eat. I'm tired of digging. This is not gonna get finished up today. Um, I may figure out where the hose line is and I don't know, maybe I'll start digging trench. I don't know what I'm gonna do next. Uh, so many projects all at once. All right guys, it's the end of the day. And uh, after lunch, I got to doing the, the PVC pipe uh, plumbing with all the shutoff valves. Oh, did I tap con the last one? I think I didn't tap con the last one on, but I've got them all in there for now on this side. Now remember, the rock in this hallway goes all the way up to this line. So there's six inches of rock in this hallway that will handle whatever water is thrown at it. Um, and then I let it dive down a little bit here. This is not glued on. It's just keeping the dirt out of that pipe. It's just stuck on there. Because remember, we have to grab this high pressure pipe over in this hole and we'll raise it up probably i mean it doesn't even need to be deep next to our structure it could be 12 inches down right here nothing's ever going to get planted up against this 12 inches down it'll grab this hallway this hallway and then we're going to pop it up here um, we're also going to do a hose bib on this hallway if you guys remember i want to have a hose inside the hallway or you know what does it make more sense to put it in the middle of the hallway here? Um, that way we could use actually a shorter hose. We could use a 50 footer. Um, we could use one of those real inexpensive shrinking hoses too that kind of turns into nothing. I liked that at the other house. When you don't drag it across your driveway, it seems to last a good long time. Um, 
maybe we'll do that maybe we'll put it in the middle of the hallway so it's easier there's no reason to stick it all the way on one end um and uh yeah, I think I, I promised you guys a time lapse on this other side. So the next day I work on this, we'll get that done. Once we get that done, we'll get the form here for this one. And we'll do the form for that one. And once that concrete is dry, we'll put a weed blocker down. And, you know, we don't have all the rock for this hallway, but we do have quite a bit of rock to move from the other house. Um, I've started moving it over in these buckets. So... I don't know, I think I have maybe 12 more buckets over at the other house and then a, a pile that I need to move into buckets as these get emptied, so more trips. All right, well, that's it for today. Uh, we'll, I think I have to demo some stuff, not cages, all the cages are done at the other house, but I have some stuff in the shop, some shop shelving and get some more stuff out of my other shop. I've got to do that tomorrow, but uh, the following day, We'll, we'll try and get this plumbing wrapped up. All right, guys. All right, we are finally back at the hallway plumbing. Um, like I believe I showed you guys before, this side is all done. And now I have, I promised the time lapse again, but really in this long hallway, what kind of a time lapse would you have really gotten? You really can't see what I'm doing in its entirety. So, um, I'm gonna show you the last two on this run. So I've gotten all the way to here and uh, I just saw. Uh, so I'm gonna put a hose bib right here in the middle of the hallway or as close to the middle of the hallway as I can. And I'm gonna use one of those, um, those shrinkable hoses. So it'll kind of go into nothing and then I only need a 50 foot long and then I'll be able to rinse all the hose, all the water tubs out as I'm filling them with the PVC pipe. Um, so we got as far as here and we ran out of T-fittings yesterday. I was too short. But if we finish up that one, get this one done, come out, and shoot over to here, and maybe we hug the wall, shoot over to here. This is just sitting on here just so dirt doesn't get in it and then come down the wall and then come up to a shutoff valve and then a quick disconnect fitting. We put a quick disconnect fitting on it, then, um, which I have in my bucket, then we can, I have the hose set up where I can use what I've been using to fill the tubs, right? It's just a quick disconnect. So. I'll be able to quickly connect it on there and have water pressure for the whole hallway, but still be able to use this hose. Um, I know that I probably said that some of this irrigation work was going to be part of this video and tying it in, but we've had rain and rainwater has filled up the holes that I've dug and barely exposing the PVC pipes. Um, I can pump it out. I do have my pump here now, but... I think that's just gonna be a whole video on its own. And then we can work on the soft irrigation lines to rain water into the enclosures. We don't need to make that all one. So uh, that'll be a separate video. If we can just get water to these enclosures. And uh, so once that's done, you see I started pitching this down. I can do a mushroom footer and I'll show you what that is. Um, put our form across here and pour our concrete for, for this footer here or i guess i'm calling it a footer but it's also a threshold really the what's below the dirt which spreads out and will carry my weight with me walking on it will be the footer so to speak um and what's above the ground is technically the threshold um and do it across here this one we don't have to worry about the plumbing going through it because remember our rock is filling up to this line so our threshold obviously needs to be a little higher than that and then we have to uh we're not going to finish the hallway in this video because we don't have all the rock to finish it but if we get the weed blocker down and start spread out this rock to cover the the tarp so it doesn't 
move or stuff something like that and then maybe we just fill the entrance and then maybe a pathway down so we always have a dry walkway and then once we had the funds freed up to get the rock done we can go ahead and get that done um so i'm gonna get started Okay, we have the plumbing's done, turned into a 90, T-fitting, 90, 90. Now, if I have a repair anywhere on this line, I added an additional shutoff valve right there. Now, the big one inch line, the high pressure water feed is gonna go underneath that, pop up there, and then run along this wall here. So, we'll later detach this and put a T that goes from the half inch to the one inch, or maybe we'll reduce the other one to three quarter, which I might be easier to find that fitting. Um, and then it will run along up top here. And then I can put a hose bib to do the uh, cleaning table, the processing table that'll be right here. And it will run along and then once this row is finished and we have a concrete wall, it'll continue to ro run along and drop down. And then when it before it drops down, we'll tie into the next hallway to do that. And then continue on to feed the chickens, quail, and whatever else we do on this property along that hedge line. Um, so the next thing to do is get the lumber cut and get these forms on and get this concrete poured. And that's all we're gonna get done today. But the next time we work, we'll finish this video because we'll get the wood on there, hang the door, do the screen, weed blocker, and whatever rocks we have. And that's where we're gonna get it to completion or as close to as we can for now. All right, I'm gonna start cutting that lumber. All right, we've got a couple bags of concrete on the back of the golf cart. Uh, and that's the form for the threshold. A couple screws just to tie it in a little bit better. But you can see how the, the base or the footer is wider than the form itself. And that'll stop it from sinking into the ground. Um, really, not much is ever going to step on it. You're going to step over it. And we're walking down the hallway to the other one. Um, and maybe this footer is a little bit deeper and squarer than the other one. Maybe I did a better job on this one. I did do it first. <laughs> and it's getting close to lunchtime. <laughs> but it's fine. Um, so I'm going to get these poured. Uh, the first concrete going in is going to be thicker. So it doesn't just pour out that because it looks like you would pour in and then flow out the bottom but if i pour that real thick and then tamp it down real good with a scrap two by four it won't flow out and then i can put thinner stuff on top to level it out so we're going to do the back one first and then we'll do the front one last we'll let this set up until tomorrow and uh and then we can get some pressure treated across there and start. I know we got to uh, shorten the doors. We'll have to make the doors fit this opening. So we'll have some work on the doors, but uh, we'll get this together. Very exciting. All right, it's the next day. I've pulled the forms off on the front and the back. Um, I do need to get this dirt maybe a little bit more and kind of smooth it out on this entrance transition because this started falling into the hallway the longer we left it so we'll level this out because we don't need to step into a puddle before we get into our hallway but 
I can level this out just a little bit in here. Um, I'm gonna run the weed whacker and knock down any of these weeds so they start with no leaves on them. And let's see, I think I do need to, again, level it out out here use this dirt to smooth it all out i just did now i think these two uh quick connect fittings aren't mating you saw it just leaked a little bit but i've tested the waters every single one of them i have no leaks and now i can fill multiple waters at the same time and still do something that's ah, not all the way open so these tubs fill pretty fast with these valves two or three at a time obviously you have to adjust it if you open two or three at a time um, or you bring it back down to one it's going to shoot further obviously but that's all good i'll get that stuff leveled out a weed whack and then we're going to cut the weed blocker for this hallway lay it out and then start getting some rocks in here to hold down the weed blocker sprinkle them down so that way it doesn't blow around in the wind and then i think if we can get the entry done not even full as high as it needs to be but higher because this has always been a wet area and then just get some sprinkled down the middle and then get the rear entrance done. And I don't want it all the way up because once we get it to, obviously we're gonna need a load of rock to really finish this up. Um, then I can put the fresh clean rock over on top. So even if I get it two inches from where it needs to be for this front section, so I'm stepping into something clean or stepping out, I think it'll be a lot better. And then really just a little pathway in the middle for now. Um, but if we can get the doors up today, it's going to be awesome. All right. I've got all the weeds now knocked down throughout the hallway and I am dragging 27 feet of the weed blocker in here. And, uh, this roll is wide enough to almost double it up through the hallway. So I'm going to get it even on that end. And then I'll do another 27 feet so it'll overlap here in the middle. Let me get those two down and flat and then I'll show it to you. All right, guys. Starting to get the rock down over the liner. Um, this shows I was just weighting it down just to hold it in place. And here's the second half where I've just put the felt down. Um, this acts as a weed blocker. Still lets the water drain through it. And, uh, I mean, you can see it's all bunched up, doubled up at the entrance. It's three quarters of it is, or two thirds of it is doubled up. And, uh, I'm going to kill all the rest of the buckets of rock that I have here. I think I still have four on the truck, two on the golf cart, and these couple here. So we're just going to do what we can with the rock just to get it weighted down. There are a couple more loads at the other house, but that's going to have to be a couple buckets every trip every time I go over there. But uh, let me get all this rock down now. All right, now the rock. Now, this area is about two and a half to three inches low, but this is a thicker layer, like I said. And then I just have a very thin layer just holding everything in place. But now you can see how nice it's gonna look when it's all clean and white, even though this is very dirty rock. Once it gets rinsed off, the dirt comes off of it and it'll all be that sparkling white. Um, and then I have it three inches, two and a half inches from full thickness here. And you can see it's gonna be probably 10 inches thick in some spots, which means all that water will be hidden under that rock. You'll never see it. So the next step is to measure Tapcon down a two by four, pressure treated two by four, and then toenail it into this wood. So it is also, when you step here, is gonna stop letting the concrete sink into the earth. It's just further tying it all in together. And then we can measure for our door width and see if we have to have a small section of screen along that post or not. I believe we will. 
and maybe I can cheat it just to one side and uh, and get these uh, I know we're gonna have to shorten the doors I already know that's that's gonna be part of it but I think I might just get the sills done and uh, break for lunch well we're we're almost there we're almost there we've got the front door hung um, I still need to get this block in there and then that little bit of screen the trim pieces on here and then the lock set for the front door and I have a combination lock that goes on that one and then the rear door I have done minus just a little bit of trim let me back up let me see if you guys can't see this this is Sunny our young het black dragon she looks like a basketball um, she is very close to Lang so hopefully very soon very exciting um, and the rear lock set is done it's got a little pressure on it but that additional lock set means you can't open it from the outside like right now you can open it up but that's not until somebody undid the combination and already accessed the hallway so nobody can break in with this well that's i'm not saying nobody never can um this is a two-handed thing but once that lock sets on there in the carabiner you can't access it from the outside easily <laughs> um but i'm gonna have to stop for today i probably have another hours work finish the trim and the screen on that front one and uh and we're gonna be as done as we're gonna be maybe you know what maybe i'll get those additional buckets of rock and get some of these spaces in the floor filled so at least we have a a white looking hallway for the finished shot all right guys this is a long time coming <laughs> very exciting end to this finishing the hallway video it's not a hundred percent finished but it's finished it's an airlock now. I've got my combination lock that goes right on there. I can open that up. I have my door stop on there. She's all trimmed out on the outside. Um, I think it's a 32 inch doorway, which gives us room to maybe hang some tongs or some utensils right there. Kill that spider before he builds a new web. Um, and that's my latch to pull and open that door. We've got our plumbing done in the hallway. We have our rocks started enough. We'll continue to bring more rocks from the other property. And the back door, which I've already been through today, we'll have this lock on here with the carabiner on it, which means you can't open it from the outside. But once you do, access to open that. And we'll have our white rock back here. Probably we'll go on the other side of the doorway and have our cleaning station right here. And we'll probably white rock it all the way to the other hallway. So we have an area. You know what? I might even white rock the whole back of the enclosures. That way, the small grow out cages that are sitting on the driveway of my house, we can move back here and maybe even extend the cage so all those small cages are within a cage but can enjoy the natural sunlight. That's a possible idea down the line for the future. But we would like to separate house and business in some way, shape, or form. But uh, that's it for this video. We are finally done enough with it. All right, guys, until next time. Thanks for watching, everyone. Please don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and ring the notification bell. See you soon.